Damien, how's it going, buddy? Welcome in, man. Unscheduled stream this morning. I just thought I'd uh, run a nice, cool little flight here. Air Canada from Toronto over to New York. How good is this livery, right? How good is this, dude? Beautiful. Look at this. Live weather as well, so the sun's setting as well, man. We're going to get going in a second. Chat, let's get it on. Just give me a second while I tee this up. Ladies and gentlemen, your captain speaking on behalf of the entire crew. It's my pleasure to welcome you on board. Please sit back, relax, enjoy the service, and thanks for having chosen Air Canada. Hey, Ross, how you going, man? Unscheduled, dude. Once again, it is a strength of the Good evening. Welcome aboard Air Canada. We did best airline in North America at the Skytrack World Airline Awards. Thanks to you, our company, for all the support that you have given us. Once again, it is a strength of the main good evening. Welcome aboard Air Canada. We did best airline in North America at the Skytrack World Airline Awards. Thanks to you, our company, for all the support We'll please serve you with us today. We invite you to relax and enjoy this flight. On today's flight, we'll please be of service in English and in French. Once again, welcome aboard. Mesdames et Messieurs, encore une fois, bonsoir. Même à bord du ce vol d'Air Canada et du meilleur transporteur aérien en Amérique du Nord à l'occasion des World Airline Awards de Skytrax. Une distinction obtenue grâce à vous, nos clients. On a été adressé, je suis votre directeur de bord. Nous sommes heureux de vous accueillir ce soir. Je pense que ce vol sera très agréable. Aujourd'hui, nous sommes heureux de vous servir en français et en anglais. Merci beaucoup. Eleven PM there, mate. Oh, mate, not long to go. You might be able to catch a little bit of stream before you head off to bed, right? Welcome Dirtbag, how's it going, Air brother? Canada. Welcome in. Bienvenue à bord d'Air Canada. Pour votre sécurité et votre confort, nous vous prions d'écouter attentivement cette brève vidéo. For your safety and comfort, we ask that you pay attention to this short video. Please place baggage in the overhead bin and heavier items under the seat in front of you. We'll be going in a second chat. Veuillez ranger les bagages dans les coffres supérieurs et les bagages plus lourds sous le siège devant vous. En prévision du décollage, asseyez-vous confortablement. Redressez le dossier de votre siège et rangez votre tablette. In preparation for takeoff, make sure you're comfortably seated with your seat back upright and tray table stowed. For your safety, you must wear your seatbelt when the seatbelt light has been turned on, and we suggest wearing it even when the sign is turned off. Pour votre sécurité, gardez toujours votre ceinture bouclée lorsque la consigne est allumée. Nous vous conseillons de la garder attachée en tout temps, même après l'extinction de la consigne. Attachez votre ceinture et ajustez-la autour de vos hanches. Pour la détacher, soulevez la partie supérieure de la boucle ou appuyez sur le bouton. Fasten your seatbelt by adjusting it around your hips. To release it, lift the upper portion or press on the release button. Air quality is important to us. That's why we always ensure that you enjoy a non-smoking environment. La qualité de l'air est importante pour nous. C'est pourquoi nous tenons à vous offrir un environnement sans fumée. À partir de maintenant et jusqu'à ce qu'une annonce soit faite à l'arrivée, les appareils électroniques portatifs doivent être réglés en mode avion. At this time, your portable electronic devices must be set to airplane mode until an announcement is made upon arrival. The illustrated card in your seat pocket or magazine rack explains the many safety features of this aircraft. Please review it sometime before takeoff. La carte illustrée placée dans la pochette du siège ou dans le porte-revue explique les nombreux éléments de sécurité propres à cet avion. Veuillez en prendre connaissance avant le décollage. If there is a need to evacuate the aircraft, leave your personal belongings behind and follow the seat-mounted lighting in the aisle to the nearest emergency exit. S'il fallait Get ready to go, chat. Get ready to go. Personnel. Suivez l'éclairage des sièges côté couloir jusqu'à l'issue de secours la plus proche. There are four exits located on each side of the aircraft. All of these are indicated by a green exit sign. Please locate the one nearest you. Il y a quatre issues de secours de chaque côté de l'appareil. Elles sont toutes signalées par une enseigne verte. Veuillez repérer celle qui est la plus près de vous. Si la pression de la cabine change, un masque à oxygène ou une languette rouge tombera du panneau au-dessus de vous. Restez assis. Tirez la languette ou le masque vers vous. Utilisez ensuite la bande élastique pour maintenir le masque sur votre nez et votre bouche. Et respirez normalement pour activer l'arrivée d'oxygène. Yeah, Ross, no worries, dude. Hey, thanks for... Oh, man, dude, thanks for the 500 stars, brother. A little support for the amount of streaming you've done the weekend. I love putting this content out for you guys. It's all about enjoying the content, right? Thank you very much for the 500 stars, man. You're a legend. Hey, Johnny, what's up? Zerio, what's up? How's it going? Welcome in, dude. We're going now. 
If there is an emergency landing on water, reach under the seat or beside your leg rest. Remove the elastic band if required. Pull out the life vest from the pouch. Dans le cas d'un amérissage, prenez la pochette contenant le gilet de sauvetage sous le siège ou près du repose-jambe. All right, we'll be getting going any second now, guys. Just wait for this uh, recording to finish. Fixez le crochet autour de la taille et ajustez la ceinture. Ne gonflez votre gilet qu'au moment de quitter l'avion. Pour gonfler le gilet, tirez la languette ou soufflez dans le tube. Slip it on. Fasten the waist clip and tighten the belt. Pulling the tab will inflate the life vest. You can also inflate it by blowing into the tube. The life vest should only be inflated as you leave the aircraft. If you need any Caitlin, assistance how's it going? or have any concerns, please let one of us know. Si vous avez besoin d'aide ou si vous avez des préoccupations, adressez-vous simplement à l'un d'entre nous. Merci d'avoir choisi de voyager avec Air Canada. Thank you for choosing to fly with Air Canada. Cool stuff, chat. Cool stuff. Caitlin sending a hundred stars. Thank you, sweetheart. Hope you have a great day, there, darling. Right, let's get it up. Full flaps up. Center Center, Center 132, Gong, Tango, let's get you. Flight following to the St. Catharines. Tango, let me make internal terminal here identified, not above 3,000 VFR, follow us for landing to St. Catharines. The altimeter is 299 or so. Alright, let's engage autopilot chat. Here we go. Roger. 5,000 set. Roger, 5,000 set. On our way, chat. On our way to New York, yep. Yeah. What a lovely sunset over Canada. Here we go. How's my day been? It's just woken up, Ross. <laughs> About 20 minutes ago. And I thought, you know what? Bugger it. I'm going to do a stream. I'm going to do a stream for a couple of hours. Just put a bit of more content out there just so you guys can enjoy it. A lot of people miss out on my live streams because of the time difference here in Australia. So, yeah, hopefully uh, a lot of people in the, in the USA can enjoy the... Uh, the, this awesome simulation. We got an aircraft to our right as well. That's another player. He's going in for a landing. How cool is that? 729 Toronto Terminal, you're identified. Climb 3000. Proceed direct to native on course. 3000, direct to native on course. Porter 729. 6 p.m. in Rock Hill, South Carolina, dude. You live near my mate. He lives in South Carolina, and my brother's from North Carolina. Beautiful part of the uh, country, dude. Gotta love the states. Thanks for coming in and uh, liking the stream, guys. Hope you're enjoying the content. Only just started. We're just taking off here in Canada, Toronto, heading towards uh, New uh, York um, in the states there. It's going to be pretty cool, man. Looking forward to this. Awesome flight. Live weather, live air traffic. Airport looks pretty big down there. Um, and also very busy as well. <laughs> Stephen Cole, dude, 1,200 stars. Man, you're the you're a beast, man, dude. And you're still watching the pig in this at this time, dude. Thanks very much. You're a number one um, supporter of mine, man. Honestly, thank you very much for all those stars. You are a legend. Very kind and very generous of you, man. 
Guy, just ease off on the throttle a little bit. I don't want to overcook it. And we're heading over the coast here. Beautiful chat, absolutely stunning. Hey Rose, hello darling, how are you? Welcome in, welcome to the chat. Hey Dirtbag, how's it going man? Hope you're having a great day man. So everything's set, it was a quick thrown together flight, I had to quickly um, set everything on my uh, on my uh, approach so we've got it all teed up ready to go um, everything is autopilot right now it was a manual takeoff and it will be a manual landing as well so we're looking forward to it Charles how's it going buddy nice plane look at that hey I was actually gonna bring out the uh, the beast that was gonna bring out the 747 or maybe even the 787 but I thought you know what it's too much thinking to do in the morning <laughs> I don't like to think guys I don't you know me I don't like to think right so uh, let's bring up the uh, my baby this is what I really enjoy Flying is the Airbus A320. This is an absolute pleasure to fly this aircraft right here. Look at that sunset, dude. So hopefully it's not going to get too dark when we uh, arrive in New York, but um, I'm sure we'll uh, be able to spot the, <laughs> the runway a mile off with the lights. So goodbye, Canada. Here we go. Alright, just need to set my speed. I've got my alarm going off here, so let me just get onto that, guys. So there's a glitch in this at the moment. It's sat at 240, and I should actually be gaining speed because I've got that set. So this is um, an issue I had the other day, but that's all good. It should come right. So over speed. Let me just uh, throw that down and bring my plane right back in speed there, and then we'll hopefully it'll fix the the little glitch up. I'm <laughs> good, thanks, Dad. <laughs> Do I look that old, right? Here we go, bring it down to um, 170. So it shouldn't be throwing a, a warning at 170, normally 245 is um, is what we fly it. So. That's the pressure. Let's just sort this out, chat. I might take her up at about 10,000 feet, let's go. Let's increase the speed to 345. Two Canada 015, we're in comp, clear, take off runway 2-3. That's better. Now it's changed it. Three, four, five, set. So currently we've got it set at 10,000 feet, which is set over here, 10,000 feet, speed at 345, which is set over here, 345. So uh, this is my, uh, my climbing uh, bar there, that's my angle of, dis of, of climb, um, same as uh, when you descend as well. So let's uh, bring that up to 345 speed, hopefully uh, I might have to drop it down to 325, but we'll see when we get closer to it.
Let's tune into uh, Toronto nine, nine, Terminal. There we go. Hey Andy, how's it going? Thanks for following in the pig, man. Welcome into the family, brother. What's happening? You used to play um, FSX a lot. Looking forward to getting uh, this after my PC setup is done. Dude, Charles. Charles! You know what? I had decades where I wasn't actually in had the ability to fly a flight simulator and only seven weeks ago I decided why not let's get into this right so I'm still quite new at this I've learned to fly the Airbus 320 as best as I can um, I've had so many successful flights in it it's uh, a brilliant plane to learn and to, to, to as absolutely uh, grasp so uh, when you get the simulation um, you know don't feel that uh, you know it's pretty daunting I mean yes it is a very very uh, complex cockpit but um, you know just even the basics to learn to set your waypoints to sort your altitude and your speed and uh, waypoints you know everything is that's the uh, the guts of it so I'll just bring that down to 340 actually so 340 is almost max to uh, before I get a speed warning so you can just see it coming up here on the, uh, on the left uh, control here that little tiny blue marker is what my speed is set at 340 which will actually uh, read from here so I can adjust it on this knob here and as I adjust that down um, so so say 320 and you'll see that uh, little uh, bar drop to 320 you see it there so um, yeah let's drop it back up to three uh, 340 and you'll see that bar move as I change this up and engage it there you go back to 340 which is just below Express the 350 space. max so uh, I like to take it on the edge right altitude very is very similar the altitude is set up uh, over on this dial here it's set up in thousands or 100s as well let me just get rid of this um, one second. Hamilton Tower. That's probably better than that uh, horrible game voice. This is a live um, ATC, by the way. So, um, yeah, you basically change your altitude over here. Uh, when you're at a lower um, altitude, it's not good to change your altitude in thousands. It's always best to do it in hundreds. Don Lynch, dude, coming in with a hundred stars. Thank you very much, brother. Good evening. And the crew. Good evening, Razor Pig and the crew, guys. What a awesome, awesome followers I got here, right? Um, so yeah, you can set it on on here, and that literally brings it down in thousands, or you can actually uh, slide it over to the hundreds and bring it down in hundreds. So um, it's a really, really cool way of um, maintaining your, um, you know, your altitude. The 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 autopilot 1, autopilot 2 is for co-pilot, we don't have that at the moment in game, uh, there is a mod coming out where you'll be able to have other players within the simulation that will be able to uh, jump in and use um, that uh, same facility where you can both fly in the same cockpit during the same flight, which is going to be cool. Right, I've had actually set up a POI here, so that might kick in in a minute, so I use uh, Bush Talk Radio for POI uh, flyovers, so... Um, just so we can check out. We're flying over a POI now. So these are POIs down the bottom. Points of interest. Um, so I'll just turn the radio off a minute. And we'll see what kicks off. This is Niagara Falls. We're flying, uh, flying over, guys. How good is that? All the way back in 2006. Niagara Falls is a group of three waterfalls at the southern end of Niagara Gorge, spanning the border between the province of Ontario in Canada and the state of New York in the United States. The largest of the three is Horseshoe Falls, also known as Canadian Falls, which straddles the international border of the two countries. The smaller American Falls and Bridal Veil Falls lie within the United States. Bridal Veil Falls are separated from Horseshoe Falls by Goat Island and from American Falls by Luna Island, with both islands situated in New York. Located on the Niagara River, Thanks, Charles. which drains Lake Erie into Lake Ontario, the combined falls have the highest flow rate of any waterfall in North America that has a vertical drop of more than 50 meters. During peak daytime tourist hours, more than 168,000 cubic meters of water goes over the crest of the falls every minute. Horseshoe Falls is the most powerful waterfall in North America, as measured by three yes, live weather. the falls are 27 kilometers north-northwest of Buffalo, New York, and 121 kilometers south-southeast of Toronto, between the twin cities of Niagara Falls, Ontario, and Niagara Falls, New York. 
Niagara Falls was formed when glaciers receded at the end of the Wisconsin glaciation, and water from the newly formed Great Lakes carved a path over and through the Niagara Escarpment en route to the Atlantic Ocean. Niagara Falls is famed for its beauty and is a valuable source of hydroelectric power. Balancing recreational, commercial, and industrial uses has been a challenge for the stewards of the falls since the 19th century. How cool is that, chat? You gotta go to bed, Paul. Go get some Z's, dude. I'll catch you on the next one, right? Been a long day. Catch up stream tomorrow. Um, yeah, absolutely, dude. I'm normal. Look, I don't normally stream on a Sunday at all. That's my day off. And um, I just thought I'd put a stream together this morning, unscheduled. So, thanks for popping in and saying hello and uh, have a good sleep and good rest. I'll check you tomorrow night, mate. So, Charles, yes, I'm using live weather and live air traffic right now. Um, so uh, this is set to real time in um, in Canada, and it looks like we've got a real aircraft that's actually flying at that moment in time, at this moment in time, just off in front of me here, just uh, above the clouds there. You can just see the lights flashing, all the strobe lights. How cool is this uh, simulation, right? Unbelievable. Yeah, take care, Paul. Look after yourself, buddy. So cruising um, left hand side you'll see there cruising um, airspeed is set at 340. I'm on automatic thrust so uh, that basically means that it should maintain that without uh, dropping or, or speeding up. Should is the key word. <laughs> um, engines 1 and 2, fuel's okay, um, everything's looking good. It's about a 40 minute flight, probably about half an hour to go now to New York um, airport so we've got everything uh, preset on approach using ILS. Um, so, uh, so that should bring us sweet in line with the um, with the runway. The only thing I've got to do is just make sure I've got the right altitude, and then bring it in for a um, a manual landing. So this plane's coming directly uh, below us. Look at that. So that's a real live um, plane right now, LXJ579. He's obviously heading towards uh, Toronto for a landing. Value maker up the top there. That's uh, that's a player. So that's another simulation player. Um, so there is a uh, few players that are actually in the area right now. What I might do is just drop it down a little bit um, under the clouds. Let's have a look. I just want to see if there's any mountain ranges. Nothing, because we're going over the ocean, so they won't be, will they? Um, I'm just checking my map. Yes, there will be uh, mountains. We're coming over towards Hornell. Um, so there's a big mountain range coming up. So I'll probably stay at this altitude. Me and mountains don't go good, right? Don't want any, uh, any big stuff ups. All right. Hey Charlotte, how's it going? Good day to you too. Alright, let's just have a look at our radar. Let me acknowledge that. Thank you. Alright, so these are all our waypoints set on the way to uh, New uh, New York. So we are looking at um, about 200 nautical miles and we'll be there. 
for departure, 284555, take care. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned off the fasten seat belt sign, and you may now move around the cabin. However, we always recommend to keep your seat belt fastened while you're seated. Uh, am I streaming doubles now? No, not yet. That'd be cool though. I um I did a stream last night with a with another plane, so you can do that. Jump into a lobby and actually fly around with me as well in bush planes. So that'd be pretty cool. So I do encourage that. Um, yeah, just obviously got to check in first, but um, yeah, that would be pretty cool to do. I just want to have a little peek under these clouds. It's a bit of a risky move here, because um, I know we are approaching a mountain range, so I'm going to drop down to about five, four, make it 4,000. Let's have a look. 245. Hey Alberto, how are you going, dude? Hope you're having a grand day, man. I just like uh, dropping down below the clouds. We get to see a little bit of the ground detail. Um, even though it's getting a bit darker now, it's live weather. Have a look where we're currently heading. Silver Springs on our left. Number sixteen ninety-five, line up two three. Keep the departing Ember in sight for visual departure. I'll get you going. Okay, right Richmond. Way. We're actually flying yeah, over Hornell. Two three, we'll keep the Ember in sight for visual departure. Number sixteen ninety-five. Fourteen fifty-nine, call departure. Let's just stick on uh, some dashboard lights here. Get the dark. Still dropping. Hey, thanks, Alberto. Yeah, just a cruisy flight, dude. Just enjoying it. I normally uh, would cruise at 10,000 until we get to New York, but um, I just want to have a little check here. We've got to be just be a bit cautious. We've got a bit of a mountain range coming up, so. Just dropping down. Look at that, guys. Beautiful stuff, right? Andy Adams, how's it going, buddy? Hope you're having a good one, man. <laughs> yeah, bunny boiler. <laughs> oh, mate, you're cracking me up. Okay, 11, 12, Charlie 4, Delta 4, uh, right again, Delta, call ground on 21.9. Delta 4, Delta, right again, Delta 4. Another thousand feet. I'm not going to drop lower than that. This just gives you a little bit more ground detail to... Look how good that is. You even get cars driving around on the streets, right? How mad is that? Yep, let's take a wrap, because uh, I don't want to hit a mountain today, thank you very much, so let's go, back to 10,000. Let's bring that uh, speed back up to 340. Let's get above the clouds, chat. You can see uh, on my radar here, we're just about to hit a lot of mountains. So we need to be 10,000 up.
Caribbean 79, Charlie 4, Delta 4, Delta, ground 21 9. We'll see Charlie 4, Delta 4, Delta, ground 1-1-9, Hey, Connie, thanks for jumping in and follow the pick, man. Welcome into the uh, stream, and thanks for being part of the family, man. Papa, departure 128 decimal 8 airborne, clear takeoff runway 23. Good day. Departure airborne, clear takeoff 23. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. All right, let's have a look and see how we are uh, cruising. Okay, coming up to about 160 nautical miles, and uh, we'll be landing. So it should be coming onto my 160 radar, just off here. Uh, you'll see the airport. Speed set at 340, and altitude climbing up to 10,000. Would I ever do proper long hauls? I don't know. It depends on if I'm on holiday or I've got uh, uh, maybe about three or four hours to, to, <laughs> to do. I, c I don't think I could ever just sit here doing like an, an eight-hour flight. Um, I don't know. Yeah. If it was a shared cockpit, absolutely would do that. Then you could tee that up with your uh, co-pilot to be able to, you know, take do it in legs. You know what I mean? That would be pretty cool. You know, do Europe to America or something like that. Daryl Atkins in the house. How are you going, brother? Good to see you this morning. My morning. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Let me see if I can uh, change out. Um, let me just see VFR map. No, okay, all good. So a little bit of a night flight here. We took off uh, from Toronto, Canada, um, just as the uh, sun was going down. So we're heading towards New York. I don't normally do a lot of night flights on stream um, because obviously you want to see more uh, aesthetics to the uh, ground detail. <coughs> so it's uh, yeah, it's quite a nice uh, little um, little flight here just over the ditch to uh, to New York from uh, Canada. Straight after this, I'm going to do a little Egypt flight, and that will be in the daytime. So if you guys are around, I'm going to take a bush plane up, and we're going to do some flights over the pyramids. Go check out uh, the um, you know the Sphinx and all that kind of stuff. So that'll be pretty cool. You'll enjoy that. I've got some POI set for that as well. Yeah, we saw your house. We flew over it. Remember that day? We landed on the road right outside your doorstep. How good was that? Just check my um, throttle, just push that forward a little bit. There you go. And uh, let's uh, crack on the old duty free. Ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to wear your seatbelt at all times. Federal regulations uh, prohibit smoking on board, and Air Canada does not permit the use of e cigarettes. On today's flight, to be offering our Air Canada cafe service. A variety of food and drinks, as well as earphones, uh, can be purchased using your credit card. You'll find the menu in your seat pocket. Google Wi-Fi internet service is available on this aircraft. You'll be able to connect to the internet by being with your credit card when the seatbelt sign is turned off. Learn more by selecting the Wi-Fi video from your personal screen. Thank you for choosing Air Canada, and have a nice flight. 
Okay, we're making good time. We're going to be uh, heading over there probably about 20 minutes. We'll be making a landing, I would say. So we're not going to be too far away. Uh, we're coming into about 130 nautical miles right now. Uh, in a minute, I'll be dropping it down to the 80 uh, radar. I'll just see uh, what we can tune in for the closest uh, air traffic. Okay, New York Center. I can actually tune into New York Center right now. So good evening, Sherman. Fun. Just change it to USA and uh, uh, tell Hey Janae, how's it going? Thanks for liking the stream. Jack at uh, Oh, you can hear the wind up here as well, right? Looking good. Oh, you did your first successful landing today, dude. What, what were you flying, Daryl? What were you flying? Was it in a, um, a prop, like a little uh, bush plane, or in your first commercial? Congratulations, by the way. How cool is it? What a feeling, right? What a feeling. All right, airport, 6 o'clock, 83 miles. All right, let's have a look where we're flying over, chat. So I don't normally do uh, night flights. Um, usually always day, so it's not. 
in the air uh, during the night. How good does the airport look when you come in, right? You want to see it. It's unreal. Okay, let's check where we are. So Mansfield to the okay, right, yeah, Southport we've just flown over. Let me just bring that speed down, air brakes on. Slightly over speed, there we go. Automatic thrust, my butt. Okay, there you go. And I've got automatic thrust um, already selected, so sometimes it does do that. There we go. Medic 1654, Currently heading towards uh, Scranton and Wilkes uh, Barry. So this is the mountain range that we've got to get over before we start dropping down towards uh, New York. Commercial, dude! Well done! What was it, a little uh, 320 like I'm flying now? These are brilliant, right? The biggest thing is, um, I used to come in when I first started learning um, to fly this. I used to come in a little bit too low, um, and uh, you know, you got to just like come down at uh, like a 40, 45 degree uh, angle um, to the runway, and yeah, you're pretty good as long as your speed can you can maintain 160. 160 on approach is really, really good speed to um, to hold, and just before um, landing, um, hit your um, hit your air brakes and drop your speed down, and then just coast around. And it's pretty good. It's got a nice, uh, you know, warning that uh, tells you altitude as you're dropping down to the deck. So that's pretty cool. Flown over Bradford, not the one in England. <laughs> oh, looks like we're making a slight turn to the right here. Just holding at 10,000. I'll probably start coming down soon, guys. So CSTR that basically shows me on certain waypoints um, where I should be as far as uh, altitude. So 9,600, and then I'm going to come around and swing in um, from the left side of um, of the airport. I used ILS. How good is ILS, dude? You do some flights to some airports, and ILS is not that good. <laughs> so you have to manually like line it up, and that's uh, always a challenge. But uh, ILS is brilliant, dude. Honestly. I mean, these planes, ILS, you can literally fly them onto the runway, um, just a few hundred feet, and you can disengage your autopilot and take it down. It's all about pre-planning your flight before you go up. Alberto, how's it going, brother? You fly to Puerto Rico. I'm going to put that in my uh, comments here. Maybe we can do a Puerto Rico flight at some stage, dude. I'd love to do that, yeah? It's always worth checking out other parts of the world. I fly anywhere in the world, champion. You can set ILS in the air, yes. And uh, when you're trying to fly an aircraft and do the um, co-pilot co role as well, it does become very difficult um, to multitask on that level. That's why it is important to have somebody uh, on board with you, and that's what we, uh, well, Microsoft's going to be aiming for. Um, to set ILS, yeah, it is a challenge and a half. It's called the turnaround as well when you do a landing to turn around and fly back to another destination. So that's all set here on the uh, keypad. So this is where it gets really, really complicated and something I've still got a lot to learn on. 
um, so you can set all your um, your your basically your uh, programming through here. So yeah, that's a different beast, yeah, and um, I know that there's a, a, a YouTuber, sorry, a Facebook um, streamer called um, Pilot Cube. Pilot Cube is a real airline pilot, and he runs through all these technical systems within the simulation. But um, I've watched it a couple of times, and I still don't get it. So I'm going to probably have to wind myself in for a few hours and really knuckle down and learn the uh, ILS uh, and uh, turn around computer programming side of it. But that's a different beast. Um, I enjoy the uh, flying of this from A to B. As far as going to C and D and doing, uh, you know, one-stop fuel stop stuff like that on route. Um, yeah. All right, where we at? Okay, coming into uh, 180 nautical miles. I'm going to change my radar down to 180. So she should be coming on. I'm going to start descending in about 40. Got a big city coming up. And there's a big uh, runway. There's an airport down there. I might bring it down a few thousand in a minute. Straight after this, I'm going to go over to Egypt, and we're going to do a little bit of bush flying around the pyramids. And, um, so that's going to be pretty uh, clutch. And it's going to be quite enjoyable. All right, these are real live planes that are actually up at the same time right now, and um, so that's what ATC is busy talking to them. We've got a PDT60, whatever it is, just flying across us here. One three. He's actually not too far away, actually. He's very close. Now I should be able to pick that up on the VFR. There he is, there, flying directly in front of me. That's him there. Right, let me uh, see if I can get hold of the tower. I don't think I don't think I'm in range yet. No. See if I can get it on the main band uh, frequency here. New York Center. Just coming into range now. Okay, coming into uh, 20 nautical miles, we can start dropping down now. Delaware water gap, uh, we're just about to fly over the Delaware water gap, and then we're going to start our uh, final leg towards um, New York City. Right, so I'm going to start bringing my speed down. So 4181, turn left, heading 210, or 24 left for takeoff. 210, heading 24 left, clear for takeoff, southwest 4181. Dropping down to 7000. Um, I have downloaded the fly-by-wire mod, but uh, for some reason I keep getting uh, little glitching issues with the uh, with the plane. Tower, 
Go so side 29, only clear number one. Super Airbus ready to roll now. Cashway Turma, wind 240 at 10. Only two for exit land. Okay, that's me busy dropping. I'm set at 7000 and uh, I've now changed my airspeed to 245. So my airspeed is also dropping as well. As we start uh, descent. Merci. Yeah, I had all kinds of problems with that uh, mod, Daryl. Um, I had copper issues as well um, as a startup. It wouldn't give me a lot of my heads up display information, um, so I decided just to knock it on the head. All right, leveling off at 240 speed, uh, sorry, 245, and dropping down to 7,000. Yeah, I was expecting that too, but it's all good. There's nothing wrong with this simulation, and don't forget they're developing it over the next 10 years, so this is just going to get better and better and better. As far as ground aesthetics um, and aircraft aesthetics and realism, uh, engine sounds, it's going to be just be ongoing and ongoing. Uh, there's quite a few aircraft uh, flying above us right here. Airwolf, remember that show? <laughs> what a shocker. <laughs> Hey Andrew, how's it going champion? Thanks for last night man, that was awesome. Hey, good flying with you last night buddy. Welcome in. Unscheduled uh, stream this morning, I just woke up and thought, you know what? We're going to do a flight from Canada all the way to uh, the US of A from, uh, to from Toronto to New York. And a night flight as well, which is unusual for me. But how good does it look at night with all the lights on and stuff? So it's going to be pretty cool on approach coming down. All right, let's have a look at the radar. See how we uh, how we're cruising here. All right, we're starting to turn in uh, on final, so I need to drop down another couple of thousand. There we go. Let's do it, and uh, can select that radar down to 40 nautical miles now. Turning in about five nautical miles. Delaware Water Gap. We're flying right over in five nautical miles. That we'll be turning on that point. Altitude is now um, set at 5,000 and I'm descending. The Delaware Water Gap is a water gap on the border of the U.S. states of New Jersey and Pennsylvania, where the Delaware River cuts through a large ridge of the Appalachian Mountains. The gap constitutes the southern portion of the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area, which is used primarily for recreational purposes, such as rafting, canoeing, swimming, fishing, hiking, and rock climbing. 
the Delaware Water Gap is known for its depth, width, and scenic beauty. It is more than 1,200 feet from mountaintop to the river surface, nearly a quarter mile wide at river level and about a mile wide from the top of Mount Tammany to the top of Mount Mincy. Sand and rock move with the river flow, continuing to scour out the riverbed and making the water gap larger over time. All right, let's drop it down to 3,000. We're getting pretty low now, guys. You sent me a message. Okay, I'll have a look at it, buddy. I'll probably have to look at it after stream. Um, kind of multitasking right now, but I'll have a look at it, brother. Okay. <coughs> Holding at 245. We're going to be on approach soon. Just uh, approach. You can see how busy New York is. This is a combination of real flights and a lot of players up at the moment. Okay, set it 3,000. Let me just make sure we want to get this right. <coughs> Excuse me, turn off terrain. Almost there, chat. About uh, 35 nautical miles and we're coming in. So I'm going to change that down to 20. Cockpit lights, uh, just turn those babies out right now. For some reason, they won't turn out. That's all good. I'll leave that on. Straight after this flight, guys, we're going to be heading over to Egypt and going to be doing some pyramid flying with a bush plane. That's going to be pretty clutch. So we'll get to check out uh, some of the awesome pyramids and the Sphinx and stuff like that. So jump in and watch it, man. It'll be unreal. All right, we're going to be turning in to the right in a second. Uh, a lot of air traffic up right now. Uh, I'll be able to tune into the uh, tower now.
these night landings are always a little bit tricky. Hey, who do you mean? How's it going? I think I said your name right. If I haven't, sorry about that, but it's worth a crack, right? I hope you're having a good day, brother. Thanks for jumping in. Hello, sir. How are you going? Right, acknowledge instruction. Thank you very much. Let's go. All right, starting to turn in. So I'm going to change this down now to hundreds, so I can start bringing this in uh, increments of a hundred instead of thousands. We don't want any uh, big problems. Andrew, totally understand and totally agree, buddy. Thanks for the message, dude. Acknowledge assigned approach. Just getting a, a, a approval for landing right now, so we're pretty close. We're starting to turn in. Airport's just to our right-hand side. You'll start to see it in a minute. There it is, just to the right there. There's a few planes actually on the deck. Come on. So slow. Hand off, thank you. New York approach. Like this is the hardest thing. You've got to fly the plane. I actually talk to ATC and deal with all the controls at the same time. So it does get a bit daunting, chat. When you actually do this for real, it's um, yeah, it's pretty. You've got to get your timing right because you don't want to be like literally coming in and then starting to do this. You want to be doing it as you're coming in, approaching. All right. Uh, Request vector to the next waypoint. New York approach, Grays Orbit 7 1 requesting vector. Right, gonna bring that down another couple of hundred. Grays Orbit 7 1 continue to tango echo while returning and following heading 155. Alright, gonna select a New York approach in a minute. Acknowledge instruction, come on. Continue to tango echo, Bravo turning and following heading 155. Just about a turn any second, about uh, 15 nautical miles. We're turning in. New York approach can raise or make seven one get runway four right. Raise or make seven one, you are one eight miles north. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect ILS runway four left approach by Kilman transition. We're going in chat, we're going in. Got a little bit of ice on the windscreen as well, so let me just sort that out guys. Starting to turn in. Welcome to New York guys. All right, 2,500 altitude. I'm going to bring that down a couple of hundred again. Just a nice slow uh, descent. Look at the cars on the road down there, guys. Absolutely brilliant. The aesthetics in the simulation is second to none, right? I'm going to cancel AFR. New York approach, Grays Orbit 7 1 would like to cancel AFR. Grays Orbit 7 1. 
Full stop landing. Acknowledge instruction. Okay, 15 nautical miles we're in. I'm going to change my uh, radar down to 10 and we're going to drop another couple of hundred. Coming in gear. Air brakes up. So the one twenty nine car and have Delray with two flexors take off. Just gonna bring the speed down to one six zero guys. There we go. Air brakes back up again on approach, bringing it down a couple more hundred. On final. So with 46 there and Delray, port the northbound Delta Jet rolling in sight. We keep our left line of way. Alright, two point left dying up and away. Now we got Delta inside the road with 486. Okay, approaching 1500. There we go, guys. Right, a little bit under speed. I'm just going to just uh, throttle up a little bit. I just want to hit that 160. Okay. Autopilot off. Full manual. Yeah, watch the skyscrapers. Watch the skyscrapers. A little bit high. Just gonna put my nose down a bit. Let's get this right, chat. Daryl Andrews, how's it going, my man? How's uh, things going over there, dude? Hope you're having a good day. So this is quite uh, cool. I'm having to watch a monitor, three different monitors right now. So it uh, always adds the uh, the pressure, right? Here we go. This should give me about a 45 degree um, descent. Eddie Walsh, how's it going? Thanks for following the pig. You're a legend, dude. Welcome to the family, brother. Hope you're having a grand day, man. 150 speed. Oh. Bringing her in. Real weather, real air traffic, guys. A little bit of wind here. 
straight over the main motorway. I'm just getting a little bit of side wind here. That's all good. All right, air brakes up. Throttle back. Here we go. Lots of runway. Woo! What a landing! Air brakes up, flaps up. How good is that, chat? Beautiful airport, right? Alright, let's get uh, air traffic to give us ground, ground handoff. Let me get off the wrong way. Thanks, buddy. It was a good landing, right? Hey buddy, thanks for following the f man. Welcome to the family champion. Thanks, Arno. What a legend. So let me just hold here a second. I just want to try and get uh, ground to give me a, um, a waypoint. Come on. That's the only thing. Sometimes it does take a little bit of time. Hey, Filippo, thanks for jumping in, dude. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Instead of taxiing over to the gates and doing the whole thing, let's jump into the next flight, guys. That was a really, really cool flight of, uh, aboard uh, Air Canada. All the way from Toronto to New York. Unbelievable. 40-minute flight. Fantastic stuff. So uh, let's. Uh, I've got a pre-flight um, done, so let's uh, keep it rolling. Let's go over in a bush plane. We're going to go bush flying, guys. Over to Egypt. We're going to go check out the pyramids. This is going to be pretty good. Fair play, but Darren, what a ledge. Yeah, that landing was pretty good, and I had a little bit of wind coming in as I was um, on approach. You can see I was a little bit to the left, not the, not perfect, but we got it down. Um, and it's pretty uh, stressful, you know, when you're actually on approach, you can't do it too soon because you're not within the, um, you know, the, the air traffic radar range. So you've got to start doing all this preparation work on <laughs> trying to get approval to land and all this stuff. And it's, uh, you know, while you're trying to fly the plane, it can get a bit, uh, how's it going? All right. Just going back to menu, guys. Here we go. Welcome in. Thanks for jumping into my stream this morning. This is an unsch unscheduled stream. I normally stream between um, 8 and 10 p.m. Australian time. But thanks very much for jumping in. Awesome to have you on board. If you haven't hit a reaction, please do so. Hit a like, a follow, or a share. Much appreciated for supporting me. And, um, yeah, hope you're all having a safe and happy uh, Saturday evening or Sunday morning, wherever you are in the world. All right, let's tear it up. Let's go. So I'm going to bring out a little, cool little bush plane, right? Um, we're going to go back to aircraft selection here. We're going to bring up the little extra 330LT. you got to love it. I could bring up the Spitfire, right? But <laughs> we'll bring up the uh, extra 330LT. Okay, let's go liveries. 
always go for my best one, the Red Bull Racing. Right, let's load her up. Am I a pilot? No, dude, no, I'm not. I just learn a lot on uh, simulations, and it is unreal. And anyone can jump into this, dude. Anyone can jump into this and learn the basics of flight. You know, start off at the low props hey, and work your way up. I've learned everything I've done, I've learned in seven weeks. Seven weeks. That's it. And I'm new to streaming as well. I've been streaming for seven weeks, and uh, we're pushing almost a 1,000 um, followers right now. It's pretty clutch, right? Pretty, uh, pretty epic. I've got a great community of people on board. Um, and um, you know they come on daily to check out uh, the old razor pig flying around and doing different stuff and I take requests as well so yeah it's pretty cool so we're gonna go uh, not real weather because it's two o'clock in the morning over there we're gonna change that up and we're gonna go clear skies and we're gonna make it a nice morning flight 847 okay let's do it I have flown aircraft before but not taking off and landing I flew when I was in the air ATC which is the air training corps when I lived in the UK um, and I used to fly up at um, in Anglesey, uh, RAF uh, Valley Camp. Um, we used to go and uh, do little flights and exercises up there, which is pretty cool. All right, let's check out some pyramids. Yesterday I did a cool flight from uh, Biggin Hill over to Dover, across the channel onto Dunkirk, Spitfire. Hey, Befon, how's it going, dude? Welcome to the family. Thanks for following the Pigman, you're a legend. So uh, yeah, I got the uh, Spitfire yesterday. It's a new addition to Microsoft Flight Sim from an external company that's um, actually designed it, and it is absolutely brilliant. All right, let me just uh, tune into Bush Talk Radio. That's what we want. Okay, here we go. I can get rid of that. Uh, FSPM which is our um, s uh, waypoint, uh, you know, uh, satellite uh, map. Let's see where we're going. Okay, let's get going, chat. Let's go. You need a beer. I need a beer. It's too early, though. Alright, let me just sort my trim out and then we'll be on our way. There we go. Trim sorted. Alright, let's get cracking. Crack a cold one for me, dude. <laughs> All right, what we got here, guys? Let's just go check it out. Right, let's stick that throttle up. Hey, Carl, coming in with 100 stars, my man. Thank you very much for the support, brother. Hope you're having a grand day, man. Awesome stuff, dude. Thank you. Hey, Steve. How's it going? Thanks for liking the stream, dude. We're over in Egypt right now. We're going to go check out some pyramids, and uh, we're going to go land at Cairo as well. I can't believe. I've been here once before, and Cairo is massive. It's a huge, um, huge place, right? So it's going to be pretty ch cool to check it out. Yeah, cool. Thanks. All right, we're just heading uh, over to a POI. I'll just check out, and then we're going to head straight up, and uh, we're going to see most of the stuff near Cairo itself.
Do I want a tinny? Yeah, give me a tinny. A cold tinny. I might actually move up north to the main POIs. Let's do it. Because I'm going a little bit out of my um, my way. That one's a bit further than I thought. Okay, let's go. So it shouldn't take too long. We'll start hitting the first. Um, we'll uh, try and track over to the uh, river up in front of us. Then track up there. You love hanging with me, sir. I love hanging with you guys, man. How good is that? I get to fly this awesome simulation. And uh, you guys get to enjoy it. And listen to me yabbering on all for two hours. <laughs> Oh man, I'm just a layback streamer, guys. This is just my passion, what I love doing, and I love putting the content out for you guys as well. And uh, I've said this before, and it's it's it's, um, it's awesome that uh, it's a bonus that I'm able to even fly the simulation, right? But to actually come in and engage with you guys on a daily base, basis is like a double bonus, right? So, how good's life? I just hope you're all having a good day and staying safe in a crazy world that we're living in right now, right? And if I can put a couple of smiles on your dials. I've won. How accurate are the maps to the region? The uh, uh, the accuracy is absolutely spot on. So what I can do is actually use a Google Maps as a side screen on my one monitor. Um, I can literally take a postcode of your residence and I can type it into Google Maps. It will give me a, a global position reference on longitude and, and latitude. And I can copy and paste that straight into the simulation and uh, basically spawn above your house um, this will take you anywhere in the world there's no way you cannot go in this simulation right so you see how uh, it's just literally open desert wait until you get to Cairo it's gonna blow your mind it's just uh, unbelievable so uh, I'm just gonna be uh, flying straight up uh, towards our uh, first uh, POI I'll just change my radar here um, there we are my POI is just onto our left our waypoint just to our left so we're a little bit out I'm gonna start turning in I've got to work out how to change seats. It's a dual control cockpit. An old bugger lug is in front of me. He's got a big head. So <laughs> I'll have to work out and get him in the back. Get him in the back and raise him in the front, right? But this is a cool plane. This is what they use for Red Bull Racing. It's um, really cool, very fast, and uh, one of my favorite uh, little bush planes. Not the easiest to land, I must say. You have to literally nurse it down really slow. But uh, she's a great little aircraft. <laughs> Steve, you're right there, buddy. I love the surname, by the way, Steve. Steve Hoffman. That's a real Dutch or South African name right there. There you can see the pyramids uh, dead ahead, so we're going to start tracking over to the pyramids. Go check it out. I've got some POI set, so it might give us a little bit of... Uh, um, they're linked in with Wikipedia, so it might give us a bit of a talk as well. So it's automatically generated. Of, um, these are actually set in-game, but I can actually create my own as well, which is pretty cool. And for those that don't know what a POI is, it's a point of interest. And um, I've got the software that I can actually create my own points of interest. So points of interest is things like waterways, um, like the River Nile, um, uh, buildings, um, uh, cities or towns historical events so things like Dunkirk you can set a POI over Dunkirk and that will explain about what happened and who and when and what and that's pretty cool There you go. Hey Steve, thanks very much for following the pigman. Welcome into the family, bro. Yeah, hitting the pyramids, dude. I just woke up, I thought, you know what? I had a bit of fun here last time I was doing the pyramids, so let's go. Let's go check it out. So we're going to do, uh, I didn't realize there's uh, that many pyramids. Um, you've got two uh, basically dead ahead of us. And you've got two just over in the distance over there as well. See that right over there? 
so there's four pyramids like literally this whole area is just stooped in history and uh, you know Egyptian um, architecture I guess back in the day we call it drinking a beer called stag well I think in the USA you get moose drool would you like a would you like a drink of moose drool I don't know whether that sounds appeasing to me see over in Australia they say would you like a goldie <laughs> that sounds a bit better I've got to get this aircon on I'm boiling hot Daryl coming in with a hundred stars dude thank you very much man what a legend thanks for showing me the love and support my brother So if anyone's wanting to get into this, um, I've got all my hardware actually listed up on uh, my uh, Razorpig uh, Facebook page. Have a, have a check in. It's under photographs. Uh, go and have a look. And uh, this is the flight stick I'm currently using in the simulation right now. So this is the X56 Rhino throttle system. And that runs with uh, all these different key binds that you can do. Um, you can literally almost fly the aircraft just on your left hand. And then that comes with your flight stick as well. So you can actually operate uh, this with a yoke, a proper yoke. Um, it depends on how immersive you want to be. Um, but um, I find this uh, flight stick absolutely brilliant. It's, it's up there with uh, probably the top three that you can probably purchase there. So it's really cool. Drank loads in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> don't tell da don't tell Daryl. <laughs> he lives in Trinidad and Tobago. That's his hometown, dude. All right, let's get low. Let's go check it out. We're just about to hit a POI now, so enjoy. The Benth Pyramid is an ancient Egyptian pyramid located at the Royal Necropolis of Dashur, approximately 40 kilometers south of Cairo, built under the Old Kingdom Pharaoh Sneferu. A unique example of early pyramid development in Egypt, this was the second pyramid built by Sneferu. The Benth Pyramid rises from the desert at a 54 degree inclination, but the top section is built at the shallower angle of 43 degrees, lending the pyramid a visibly bent appearance. There you go, chat. Didn't know that. She's a bit wonky, right? But Ben. Oh, congratulations on your marriage two years ago, Chris. Of course, I know that because you're my best mate. <laughs> How you going, brother? Hey, we'll catch up in Discord in a bit, right? I don't usually stream these times, mate. What's going on? Maybe I couldn't sleep, right? It's always good when one of my best mates jumps in and has a check out the old pig, right? How good's that? Let's fly a little bit uh, further north. This guy's got a big melon in front of me, right? I should chop his head off. <laughs> Put him in the back.
The reason I'm doing this is because you and I, Chris, we were actually doing a bit of goosing around around here the other day, and I thought, you know what's going to be pretty cool? Is to actually run this and show some POIs as well. The Pyramid of Djosa, or Steppe Pyramid, is an archaeological site in the Saqqara Necropolis, Egypt, northwest of the city of Memphis. The six-tier, four-sided structure is the earliest colossal stone building in Egypt. It was built in the 27th century BC during the Third Dynasty for the burial of Pharaoh Djosa. The pyramid is the central feature of a vast mortuary complex in an enormous courtyard surrounded by ceremonial structures and decoration. The pyramid went through several revisions and redevelopments of the original plan. The pyramid originally stood 62.5 meters tall, with a base of 109 meters times 121 meters and was clad in polished white limestone. The step pyramid is considered to be the earliest large-scale cut stone construction made by man, although the nearby enclosure wall gives El Madir is suggested by some Egyptologists to predate the complex, and the South American pyramids at Carroll are contemporary. In March 2020, the pyramid was reopened for visitors after a 14-year restoration. Cool stuff, chat. Cool stuff. So, uh, Daryl, meet Chris, Chris, meet Daryl. Daryl, Chris is someone I've actually known for about, oh my god, 35 years. He's a real close mate of mine, uh, back from the UK. One of the nicest guys that you can ever meet, right? Massive into aviation, and he uh, flies a simulation on here. Uh, not on here, but he actually flies DCS, which is Digital Combat Simulator. That is a different level on its own. Um, that's another game that I've been explaining to you guys about. Um, that is full combat um, immersion. Alright, here's the Sphinx. Let's go and check him out. There's a few, few other pyramids going on up here too. It's getting a bit busy as you approach Cara. There's Cara. Look at the size of it, eh? Massive. And it's quite unusual, like uh, unreal. You've got complete desert on one side and all lush green uh, fields on the other. Uh, the closer you get to all these waterways, it's uh, obviously it, uh, is a massive resource in the area. Great Sphinx of Giza, commonly referred to as the Sphinx of Giza or just the Sphinx, is a limestone statue of a reclining Sphinx, a mythical creature. Facing directly from west to east, it stands on the Giza Plateau on the west bank of the Nile in Giza, Egypt. The face of the Sphinx is generally believed to represent the pharaoh Khafre dot cut from the bedrock. The original shape of the Sphinx has been restored with layers of blocks. It measures 70 the nuke is ready and primed. from paw to tail, 20 meters high from the base to the top of the head and 19 meters wide at its rear haunches. It is the oldest known monumental sculpture in Egypt and is commonly believed to have been designed 
sculpted, and constructed by ancient Egyptians of the Old Kingdom during the reign of the Pharaoh Khafre. The Giza Pyramid Complex, also called the Giza Necropolis, is the site on the Giza Plateau in Greater Cairo, Egypt that includes the Great Pyramid of Giza, the Pyramid of Khafre, and the Pyramid of Mankore, along with their associated pyramid complexes and the Great Sphinx of Giza. All were built during the Fourth Dynasty of the Old Kingdom of Ancient Egypt. The site also includes several cemeteries and the remains of a worker's village. The site is at the edges of the Western Desert, approximately 9 kilometers west of the Nile River in the city of Giza, and about 13 kilometers southwest of the city center of Cairo. The Great Pyramid and the Pyramid of Khafre are the largest pyramids built in ancient Egypt, and they have historically been common as emblems of ancient Egypt in the Western imagination. They were popularized in Hellenistic times, when the Great Pyramid was listed by Antipater of Sidon as one of the Seven Wonders of the World. It is by far the oldest of the ancient wonders and the only one still in existence. Hello Dennis, how's it going mate? Welcome in. Expect the unexpected always champion with me. Alright, let's push on. We're gonna uh, head towards the airport. Gonna go check out the Supreme Council uh, of Universities. Cairo Tower as we make our way to um, Cairo International. How cool is this, right? Cool little flight. Hey guys, welcome into the uh, stream. Thanks for being on board. I hope you're enjoying it. We had an awesome Airbus 320 flight earlier, and that was from Toronto, Canada, all the way to uh, New York in the USA. About a 40 minute flight. We're just doing a little bit of bush uh, flying here in uh, Cairo. Just checking out some of the, the pyramids and stuff. Hey, 27 viewers. Happy days. Good, good that you're on board. Um, thanks for jumping in. We've got 17 non-followers. Guys, hit a reaction. Hit a follow, like, and a share, and uh, give us some support there. Thanks very much for jumping in. I hope you're all having a safe and happy weekend. I want to see my mummy. Boom, boom. If I had a dollar for every time someone said that, I'd be rich, right? All right. Supreme Council of Universities. Check this out. Cairo University, known as the Egyptian University from 1908 to 1940, and King Fuad I University from 1940 to 1952, is Egypt's premier public university. Its main campus is in Giza, immediately across the Nile from Cairo. It was founded on 21 December 1908, however, after being housed in various parts of Cairo, its faculties, beginning with the Faculty of Arts, were established on its current main campus in Giza in October 1929. It is the second oldest institution of higher education in Egypt after Al-Azhar University, notwithstanding the pre-existing higher professional schools that later became constituent colleges of the university. It was founded and funded as the Egyptian University by a committee of private citizens with royal patronage in 1908 and became a state institution under King Fuad I in 1925. In 1940, four years following his death, the university was renamed King Fuad I University in his honor. It was renamed a second time after the Egyptian Revolution of 1952. 
The university currently enrolls approximately 155,000 students in 20 faculties and three institutions. It counts three Nobel laureates among its graduates and is one of the 50 largest institutions of higher education in the world by enrollment. Concerning the Faculty of Engineering, in 2006, the college began implementing the credit hour system in specialties, construction engineering, computer and telecommunications engineering. In 2007, more programs were developed, mechanical design engineering, architecture, engineering, construction, technology, and petrochemical engineering. Following in 2008, the construction engineering program was introduced. In 2009, the water and environmental engineering program was implemented. Cool stuff. Hey, Don, yeah, that's something that we could do, definitely. I'm probably going to go off stream after this, dude. But, um, yeah, the, uh, the graveyard, is that the one that's uh, there in uh, Tucson? The Cairo Tower is a freestanding concrete tower in Cairo, Egypt. At 187 meters, it is the tallest structure in Egypt and North Africa. It was the tallest structure in Africa for 10 years until 1971, when it was surpassed by Hillbrow Tower in South Africa. One of Cairo's well-known modern monuments, sometimes considered Egypt's second most famous landmark after the Pyramids of Giza, it stands in the Jazeera district on Jazeera Island in the River Nile, close to downtown Cairo. The Museum of Egyptian Antiquities, known commonly as the Egyptian Museum or Museum of Cairo, in Cairo, Egypt, is home to an extensive collection of ancient Egyptian antiquities. It has 120,000 items, with a representative amount They're bringing it to console to me. They're bringing it to console, brother. Built in 1901 Xbox. by the Italian construction company Garozzo Zaffarani to a design by the French architect Marcel Dournion, the edifice is one of the largest museums in the region. As of March 2019, the museum is open to the public. In 2021, the museum is due to be superseded by the new Grand Egyptian Museum at Giza. They are bringing Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 to Xbox. How good is that? It's going to be unbelievable. All right, let's push on and uh, do a landing. This is going to be uh, insane. <laughs> Oh, dude, absolutely. The aesthetics in this is uh, mind-blowing, dude. It, it really is. The, the attention to detail as well is... Everything is taken off satellite. Everything's rendered in. And there's a lot of areas where it's still not... 100% um, you know it's all taken from um, like I said satellite imagery um, and all these 3d buildings are actually buildings that are there so there's still a lot of work to do in certain key areas around the around the globe and they're going to be developing this game for the next 10 years chat 10 years right so uh, that's pretty exciting stuff and that's uh, new aircraft uh, better modeling to airports uh, uh, cities uh, points of interest is a big thing um, and it's um, yeah it's it's pretty cool love it This is straight out of Cairo, uh, Cairo Tower. Mauritius 749 is 
Descent 4,000 feet. QNH 1014, cleared Islas approach runway 14, next call position, Gap T, Mauritius 749. Position gap E3, 8,500 feet. Roger, contact Tower 118, decimal 1, good day. Tower 181, good day, Mauritius 749. Tower D313, request descent. Descent 7,000 feet, QNH 1021, Tower D313. Descent Alright, let's try and get this baby down. We're going in, we're not going to mess around with this via, um, ATC's doing my head in. <laughs> Here we go. Alright, let's just land the baby. Just want to bring my speed down to about 80 if I can. 5 Alpha Micro Romeo, radar cleared for the approach, descend at 7,000 feet, QNH 1020. Uh, cleared for the approach, QNH, uh, uh, descend 7,000 feet, uh, QNH 1020. I'll call you, uh, Alpha Micro Romeo. How good is this chat? You gotta get it. Get an Xbox, dude, when they, when they launch it. You gotta get an Xbox. Nope, not listening. I'm going down. Yep, well I ran out of runway on that one chat. <laughs> Cock that well up. <laughs> Chris, close your eyes, you didn't see that brother. <laughs> awesome streaming for you guys today man. That was awesome. That's an unscheduled stream. I don't normally uh, stream on a Sunday at all. Um, so it was just something I wanted to wake up and do. I just felt like doing an Airbus 320 flight and then just do a little uh, a little bush plane uh, spin over um, the uh, pyramids there and check it out. But that was unreal. The uh, the first flight was brilliant. I loved it. And it was a nice uh, sunset, right, uh, real uh, live weather and real live air traffic as well. But guys, thanks for jumping in. Unscheduled stream. I normally stream five days a week. Uh, the only days off I have is Sundays and Thursdays, but otherwise I'm always on between 8 and 10 p.m., which is uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time. But uh, thanks for jumping in and watching me. If you've not hit a reaction, please do so. Hit a follow, like, and a share.